Okay, so we're finished with our casual browsing outside of Michael Todd's. Now let's head back to that bike trail. There's two paths on, or one path on both ends of the bike trail. I'm picking the one that's a much smoother surface. You can see some of these houses on the left have murals painted on them along the bike path. There's actually quite a few murals. I like the number of people that I'm seeing on this trail just at the start here because it gives you like an active community feel. I think that might be the Valley Metro. That main. Continue on Grand Canal Trail for one mile. Yeah, I think it is that main train. 
try to check Google Maps here. Yeah, I think it is. So where am I headed next? Well, this bike trail, <coughs> excuse me, is gonna lead us to near the Biltmore area. And there is a Trader Joe's there, which I love seeing those. When I was in Tempe for my first video in the Phoenix area, I visited Trader Joe's in Tempe I always love looking at the little artwork pieces and themes that they have inside the Trader Joe's that represent the city. But this will be the Trader Joe's that's in Phoenix. So I'm just going to pop in real quick and take some snapshots of their inside. By the way, you got some nice baseball fields over there. I think that's a uh, high school. I guess that's a good thing with Arizona. You get to play baseball year round if you want to. But yeah, trade after Trader Joe's and not too far away from there, there's a, I don't know if I didn't check to see if it's an indoor or outdoor shopping mall, but it's like a shopping mall that I don't think would be nearly as well-known or popular is the Scottsdale one that I visited the other day. But it should still, at least another thing to do along a pit stop and this grab bag adventure day. This is 7th Street that we're on now. When we get to 12th Street, that's when I'm getting off the bike path and taking a few city roads. Because otherwise, this bike path is going to keep curving that direction, whereas the Biltmore area is diagonally, diagonally that direction. So there gets to be a point where it's no longer makes sense distance-wise to take this bike path for the destination that I'm trying to get to. It's cool too, I don't know if you can tell, on the ground as we're riding, it's telling you what streets you're passing, like you just passed 9th Street. Uh, I don't know if we passed it or just approaching it. But like right here it says 9th Street. So I guess, yeah, in between that, it's like the front yards and the thing. Now 10th Street from here, meaning including like the properties. And then this is actually the 10th Street Road. And then probably up here, there'll be another sign that indicates we're off of 10th Street. Yeah. Directionally, you probably could have taken that road and it would have made it a tad shorter since we are curving to the right here, but shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'm sure there's something with Google's algorithms that say you get to go faster with a bike on a bike trail, uninterrupted with traffic. even if the distance would have been slightly shorter to take that street. So I'm guessing this will be 12th up here. Yeah, 
minutes. This is 12th Street. Although I think I still want to cross because I'm going to be going left for a bit, but then still going, like making a right-hand turn after that, down Campbell Avenue. Well, I think it's giving me the... I guess there's no dedicated sign there. There must be flashing lights somewhere. Yeah, flashing lights up above the street, but I couldn't really see that. So I was sort of taking the taking the vehicle's word for it that they were going to stop by them slowing down. The bus system for my limited time here in the Phoenix and nearby areas seems pretty good at getting you from place to place, meaning there's a lot of coverage for the routes. A lot of the streets that I've walked down or biked down, like I don't have to go too far before I see like, oh, there's a bus shelter. Here's Campbell that we're going to ride down. Sixteenth Street, but when I turn my head toward the right on Sixteenth, I see another bus stop. So again, just bus stops down, up and down every street. It seems like. Yesterday, after I was done touring Scottsdale at nighttime, I already had a bus pass for the day so I figured that I wasn't going to spend like an extra 22 bucks or $25 on a Lyft or Uber on the way back and I had already sightseed I wasn't in a rush to do anything 
I was just going to be headed back to the hotel for a night. So I said, oh, let me, I don't know, I looked up the bus routes and it said it would take about an hour to get back to the hotel. Again, that was perfectly fine for me. But it was two buses, so I took one from Scottsdale and it dropped me off near, I think, 7th Street. And then after that, initially it was supposed to be like a eight minute buffer or I'd have time to catch it. And the bus was making, it was like three or four minutes late, but then it came, the bus that I was originally getting on. But then it was moving fine. And then all of a sudden when it was like three stops away from the connecting point, there were passengers who were getting on and at each of the three stops, like, they each had some form of excuse of, like, why they couldn't pay. And the driver, like, just ended up letting them on. But each interaction took, like, one and a half minutes of stalling time. So I got off my stop. I was still, like... three minutes ahead of schedule for when the next bus was supposed to come at that connecting spot, but it was like a two minute walk. But I, knowing how, since I'm a regular transportation rider, I know it's possible that buses will come early sometimes. So I sprinted that little two minute walk. And sure enough, as I was sprinting, I could see the bus coming in the distance. So it paid off that I was sprinting. Let's see, we're over the highway right now. Yeah, I ended up catching that one just in time. Like, I, I got to the bus stop after sprinting there, and the bus arrived 15 seconds later. I boarded that one, and then that one went pretty fast to get to the, the hotel back to downtown Phoenix. It says it's the Highland Estates neighborhood. All right, I think when we get to the traffic light, we're going to be turning left and going left for a bit. And then we should be getting the Trader Joe's. It says 0.4 miles away from Trader Joe's. That gives some perspective. There's a sign there that says Highland or Highland Estates. I think they must just have like a lot of community names because it's visually it doesn't look distinct per se from any of the other side streets that have gone down. I think this is the road that I said I was going to turn now.
even though the light's about to change. No traffic is coming either way. So I'm just gonna go now. see Trader Joe's in the distance. Looks like it's after the light in the plaza. Be just beyond Whole Foods Market. See how I can weave my way over there. And there we go, Trader Joe's. Got to find a spot to park the bike. See if there's any bike racks nearby. So the biking bike racks were by Whole Foods. I couldn't find them anywhere else. Uh, one quick note: the person who rented me the bike in Tempe, the uh, the store, they gave me a tip that I never realized with these cable locks. They said, oh, the way you get it to stretch and lock both tires when you're locking your bike is you wrap the loop around this, then you do this, and then circle around that. It's like all these years I tried to just make like a big circle of this and try to squeeze this in. I was like, <laughs> how simple is that? And this is a Topeak thing that slides on. But I'm going to take that with me so that no one steals it. So there's other places here too, the LA Fitness pet market trader joe's i also saw pizzeria bianco that might be the place that's like the slice shop version of chris bianco's uh shop in downtown phoenix uh, they open at 11 a.m i don't know if it's, if it's related i'll have to check it out But here's the Trader Joe's in Phoenix, Arizona. So this particular location, as soon as you enter, you see you go to the right side. You've got a nice mural up there. So all I got was a banana. That's all right. I was just looking for a quick snack and checking out the artwork inside. But this is what I was talking about with Pizzeria Bianco. So I looked online. Pizzeria Bianco is like another form of Chris Bianco's pizza shop. But this isn't the slice shop. The slice shop was actually called Pan or Pain Bianco. And that was really close to Melrose that I was at earlier. So I uh, didn't get to go by that. But I grabbed a banana for a quick snack. And 
One thing I'll say about the Trader Joe's, I was surprised. This is like the Trader Joe's with the least amount of artwork in it. The exterior is still cool, and you know, I don't regret going to it, but I thought there would be a lot more Phoenix related murals or stuff about like the sports teams, and even Tempe had more. All right, ready to venture off again. Oh, let me plug my battery pack into my camera here. Try to swing by the Biltmore Fashion Park. Just saying bye to Trader Joe's. So there's also a few stores over here before you get to the mall, like there was a Banana Republic there and there's some stores embedded throughout here. Like a Nordstrom rack. Peaks. I still think it wants us to go to the main road over here though, so let me deviate before I end up forming a circle. So we're riding down a road called Camelback. Another bus shelter there for the Valley Metro Transit System. At the light is when we're going to be making a left. What's, I don't know where headquarters are for certain places, but it's interesting to see Realty Income and Lucid with signage here. Both on the stock market, Realty Income is represented by the symbol O.
arrived at my destination. So I'm either I want to get over there. So whichever one changes first, I'll go that way. I think we're gonna get to go this this way. Yep. So based on pictures online, it looked like it was a mix of an indoor and outdoor shopping mall. Like you'll have Cheesecake Factory in the corner and some other stores, but there will be indoor presence. I don't know if I'm gonna go in there. I already like last night spent time videoing the Scottsdale Fashion Mall. And that one, Surely, it probably exceeds this one in terms of the depth of stores that's in, that are inside. This is the corner of Camelback and 24th. You can see over there where we came from, there's a sign that says 24th and Camelback. This one car got the jump on right turning. So it's advertising Macy's, Sephora, Saks Fifth Avenue, Pottery Barn, among other places. Got your Cheesecake Factory on the corner. Macy's is the big building beyond that. Let's try to do a quick walk through. Excuse me. We got a directory up here. Maybe that'll help us. You are here. So we're right here. G is Gorgiana. H is Lululemon and McLaughlin. I is Ralph Lauren. Huh, it doesn't make it seem like there's a dedicated shopping mall. Or like indoor presence. Let me try to go between these buildings and see what we have. You know what, maybe when I saw one of the pictures, maybe it was like this and it just looked like an indoor shopping mall. Because it kind of looks indoor, doesn't it? But you're really outside. Yes, I might have been fooled. Got a little park. It looks like sometimes they do movies at the park.
Williams Sonoma Sonoma So this is pretty cool for like it's a different different spin on the outdoor shopping that I'm used to. I like it because it's it essentially looks it feels like an indoor mall, but you can get away with this like it's in Arizona if you have such little rainfall. But it, what's important is you have the shade, you still have the cool air of feeling outside, you have the landscaping in the middle, so don't think I've seen something quite designed like this. Of course it's a variation of things along the lines of I, I always use Crocker Park as my one of my examples but I dig it I'm not sure if they have much of a food presence in terms of like dining options or if it's just fashion related Looks like there's a grill over here on the right. Authentic Italian pizzeria at Como. Then there's a Sephora. Lifetime Biltmore. I'm not sure what Lifetime Biltmore is. Okay, so Camel, oh, sorry. Lifetime is just the gym. So now we're ready to head back to Camelback and go toward what will probably be our final destination. It's another bike trail that will look nearly identical to the one we saw earlier. But the final spot I want to get to on the bike trail is called Arizona Falls, where it's like a mini waterfall segmented on the trail. I gotta make sure Google Maps doesn't, there's two different ways I can get there, but I wanna take, get to the bike path sooner rather than later. And turn right onto North 26th Street, then turn left onto East Camelback Road. Google keeps trying to adjust to my route. So I keep trying to tell Google, no, don't do that. <laughs> Camelback. I'm going to want to ride on the shaded side of the street. So I'm going to cross back over.
see if we get the green walk sign right away. Yep. Some of these bus shelters are really built to be durable. It seems like the cement. I need to keep an eye on 34th Street. I was waving that person on to like to go because I was stop in the process of stopping and they then they shifted over to the dirt as I was stopping so I just continued and nodded my head and thanked them. The reason I point that out is sometimes one time I had some user who watched a random video where something to that effect happened and they were like you didn't you made a person with a baby like get out of the way and i'm like <laughs> it's, it's, it's nothing like that i definitely am not the type of person to try to bulldoze through people but you know you can't see from my body language on the video what i'm doing Fourth Street is when we're going to be making a slight left to get to this trail. This is 32nd Street coming up, so two more blocks to go. Before we get off of Camelback.
where it says in 600 feet to turn left. But if that's this street over here, I don't know if I'm really going to be able to make that left turn. Yeah, it's 34th Street over there. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going to 36th Street. It'll accomplish the same same thing, it looks like. Oh, of course. There's no traffic coming either way. I could have definitely made that. So far, everything I've been riding near Phoenix or the surrounding areas has been like flat, flat ground. Not like when I was doing that bike ride from the Las Vegas Strip during Super Bowl weekend 2024. I did a bike ride from the Las Vegas Strip out to Summerlin. And the entire way was just an uphill incline. It was brutal for me to a degree here's 36th street so I'll cross first maybe since there's no walk sign hesitating when to go I guess I'll go now. I have a buffer of cars behind me that are going straight. That's usually how I judge it. Like if I feel like treat those cars as your fullback, to use a football terminology, they're going to be my blockers. So that I know a car is not going to turn. Lights changing now. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> There's no sidewalks here. Well, now we know why it was recommending 34th Street earlier. But we're not supposed to be on here for too long. I don't think this will be heavily trafficked. The heck was that? <laughs> Someone way behind me. Nothing related to me. They were just like yelling something like, ah. Oh. All right, it looks like we're actually gonna ride when we go straight right into the bike path. So this isn't bad. You can tell there's no vehicle traffic because this ends up being a dead end for cars. Here we go. Well, it says bike route end. But that's not true. Because 
because the new bike route starts up here. Now we won't be able to get across the river until we reach like the next major intersection. There's police activity up ahead there. So this one is called the Arizona Canal Trail. We're on the other side, but over there on the left where that person is walking. Google calls it the Phoenix Bat Cave. It's fenced off, I think. Although it looks like there's a roadway maybe that takes you further. I don't know if there's actually something to see there, but it's called the Phoenix Bat Cave. So we're gonna ride this 16 miles, sorry, 16 minutes. <laughs> Better not be 16 miles. 16 minutes or 3.1 miles to get to Arizona Falls where it'll probably be our final destination. Well, I think it'll be our final destination as far as, like this has been a continuous journey so far, meaning it's almost like you're following me every step of the way in real time. Look at that, they got a basketball court back there in that yard. Half, half court basketball. But if I, after the Arizona Falls, that'll either be the end of the video or I'll, on the way back, when I'm making my journey back, if I see any quick hit or interesting things, I'll film for like a few seconds just to point it out. This is interesting how there's not really a dedicated crosswalk for cars. Let me try to use my judgment though. Yeah, like right now I can go. Sorry, really not a dedicated crosswalk for walkers or bikers. And this part of the path looks like it's covered in glass. So I'm gonna walk it through here. Let me pause it while I'm walking that. All right, so after I did that little bit of crossing, I had to go to the, walk down to the crosswalk because it was an even busier road. Another big pile of glass right here, Jesus. And this road, this part of the path isn't nearly as 
paved as the other side was before but looks like both ends are like that we're gonna I guess just ride it there's no no other choice I mean it's still fine it's just not in as good of a shape I'm telling you, mentally, this is a really tough thing to ride on because I don't know if it's an illusion, but like the whole time I'm riding, I don't know if the video's picking it up, all you see are shiny fragments on the ground with the sun glazing off of them. And anytime I historically have seen that in all my years of bike riding, I think of glass, 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 and I don't want to ride in that area. So mentally, it like feels like I'm riding through nonstop glass, but I'm thinking it's something else. Maybe the sediment and because it's all over the place. I can't imagine there's that much glass. And it's not when you actually look down, and you get to the spot, you don't see fragments of glass. But it's playing mind games with my head. Earlier when I did point out there was piles of glass, that part, those parts were definitely glass, like at the, near the street. So this one we do get a crosswalk signal here. And it looks like it's one where the only time it ever gets triggered is if someone presses the button. So all those cars can shake their <laughs> shake their fists at me like oh he's the guy who is the reason we had to stop here Facing a little bit of resistance from the wind if you hear that on the camera. You can also see the direction of the water flowing.
estimate that we're about seven or eight minutes away. So it looks like up here, there is no path. We can cross over the bridge and use the path on the other side. I, mean, I guess you could have Maybe still use the path over there, but it's more rocky. Yeah, I mean, it's still fine to ride, but the upkeep is not top tier shape. Over there on the right, a place called Little O's or Oso drinks to go. See on this path, sometimes you go pretty long distances before you reach the next intersection. Hopefully this waterfall is worth it. You look pretty in the pictures.
It says we're three minutes away now. So we're in the home stretch. I can see the station of the falls just up ahead. We're gonna have to turn left, wait for this light to change. All right, the light should be getting ready to change. Over there, there's a Lou Malnati's pizzeria place. I'll get back on and ride in a second. We've made it to Arizona Falls. Uh, I was going to say, I could walk the bike down there, but yeah, I'd rather lock it up. Looks like there's a bike rack over here. I'm going to lock it up and then continue the video. Alright, so let's go on down here. Arizona Falls.
if you enjoyed this video and finishing off here at Arizona Falls, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time. One quick note before I sign off. I should point out, so I'm at the Arizona Falls thing still, which was over there, so I came from that direction. I'm gonna head back to the hotel now, but if I were to ride 12 more minutes that way, I would be at Old Town Scottsdale. So if you watch that video, that's where I was last night, and I didn't have the bike there, but I explored that whole A neighborhood, but hopefully, I like like bridging videos together, like, oh, it makes sense what leads to what. So if you were taking this bike path, you could continue down to Old Town Scottsdale.